we were on in Anna. Really nice to meet you in your exhibition at the Emergence. <laughs> and I um, just wanted to ask you a few questions about your journey to creativity and, and the extent to which your, your diversity is a part of your work. So just, just to start off with, tell me about your, um, the exhibition and what's happening here today. Okay, so what's happening here is for the first time ever, I'm exhibiting um, on large canvases. I have a large canvases exhibited. Mm -hmm. um, I was lucky to meet Kate Howe, who's the owner, who's, who has the gallery here, um, and she she liked my work, but she wanted me to work on a bigger scale. Yeah. So she, to cut a long story short, she allowed me to paint here mm -hmm. because I can't paint in the home. I paint on the kitchen floor, and mm -hmm. my I have to paint on the floor because mm -hmm. of the way that I, I paint, otherwise the paint would be falling off the canvases. Yeah. Um, so um, yeah, so she allowed me to use the studio in November for two weeks mm -hmm. and um, I didn't know really what I was doing. <laughs> she gave me the challenge to uh, paint without black and white and also with um, large brushes. Yeah. So I went home and <laughs> bought some brushes from Wilco and my friend strapped some bamboo and some brushes. Fantastic. And Fantastic. Could have a go. And, uh, yeah, so it was quite, quite daunting. Awesome. Um, but yeah, so this is what I managed to produce. Yeah, so this one that's behind you, let's just take a quick, ooh, a quick look at this one behind you. What is this one called? It's called Sod It, I'll Just Paint. <laughs> <laughs> so you explained to me before that this one is kind of the, the last one in your trilogy of big canvases. Yes. Is that, is that right? Okay. Yes. So this is the one where you feel you, you're, you're most um, relaxed behind the... Yes. Yeah, with yes. the paintbrush in hand. After finding my feet in the gallery and realising that, the, that, that Kate was happy with what I was doing and, yeah. you know, I was, I was okay, I wasn't doing anything wrong or yeah. spilling anything or pressing the wrong buttons or, or yeah. whatever. It's, it's a lovely so, piece of work. Yeah. If you just walk with me around, I just want yeah. to quickly look at uh, this one, which is also part of a big exhibition called Reemergence. So talk to me about this one. So this one, um, basically I hadn't, I'd never painted large scale before. Um, I'd got my big brushes. I had the challenge for not using um, white or black. I was thinking, well, if I don't use white, how am I going to lighten the painting? So I thought, well, I'll, I'll have a go with these fluorescent colours. Fantastic. And um, it just kind of flowed, really. It, it looks amazing. I can see it almost like a, a, a little head here with a, a sort of alien looking yeah. face. And is that kind of a motif that you're using? No, it's, it's the thing about my, my paintings is I don't plan them at all. I just get the colours in my head. I get the tubes of paint, put the, put the paint straight onto the canvas, and then I get a big brush and I'm away, which is what Kate wanted to see. She wanted to see my body yeah. more used yeah. in it. Yeah. In the painting, so um, no, I don't plan any of it. Yeah. <laughs> it just happens. The paintings paint themselves. Awesome. We've got a lot of movement in this one, movement and colour together. Mm -hmm. If we just skip over to this one over here, um, this one here, which is, I think that was your second, the second one. The second yeah. one. Okay. Yeah. So, do you want to stand in front of that one yeah. and just tell me, tell us a little bit about this one here? So it? this one, you know, I'd, I'd done the first one and I'd had to go, but it was quite dark. So I thought, well, maybe I need to lighten this one up a bit. And um, again, I was very nervous that I might be, you know, I might not get it right or she might not be happy with what, I, what I'd done. Mm -hmm. um, because of my, my history, because I was actually chucked out of art college for not being creative enough. So mm -hmm. I didn't paint for 30 years. Mm -hmm. So I used to used to paint. I stopped painting for 30 years. So this was, yeah. I felt that I had to get it right. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but actually, and, and this one's called. I think it's called What If She Hates It. Or <laughs> what if she doesn't like it. Yeah. Um, but I, I got an email after painting for a while saying yes, yes. So she, yeah. she was happy with She's what happy I'd done. With it. I see a lot of fire in this one, a lot of um, emotion. So talk, talk us through the process of this one. Um, well, it's again, it's the same process. It's just putting the paint on the canvas and just seeing what emerges, really. Mm -hmm. um, different people have seen different things. Like someone sees a fairy here. Mm -hmm. I see an eye there. Yeah. Um, 
someone else or a swan. Yeah. I mean, I and I, I got very into this. This is almost yes. like alien, alien plants yes. from another planet. Yeah. So I got really into the flow. Like for me, what's more important is the flow and the yes. colours. Yeah. So it's the it's the colours that kind of guide the for, guide the form really. Mm. Colours take charge. So I don't I don't have any say in that. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's very, very naturalistic. Just mm. in terms of of your sort of. Um, your history and your diagnosis mm -hmm. and your neurodivergence, just talk me through that because obviously you've talked about your dyslexia, your, yeah. your autistic spectrum yeah. diagnosis yeah. and how much is that a big part of your creativity and your process? Well, um, for me, um, I, I think when I, start, when I got back into art again after being diagnosed with dyslexia and dyspraxia at Hillcroft College, mm -hmm. um, I knew that I wasn't going to draw things mm -hmm. and I couldn't do anything perfectly so it had to be something abstract. It had to be colour because I've always loved colour. Mm. Um, so just a case of just putting it on the canvas and then seeing what emerges really. Mm. And, and then since, I've always loved colour but since being diagnosed, getting my autism diagnosis last year, I kind of realised that I'd been masking all my life and didn't know who the hell I was. Didn't, mm. didn't have a clue who I was. Mm. So, but actually, the one thing that's really me is my art. Yes. This is the way. This is what comes from me. Yes. And the clothing that absolutely I produce, which is what I wear all the time, which is me. Yeah. So that's not from someone else. That's me. So absolutely. it's been a big thing in my life, really. Just so, would you say that your your diagnosis ha you, has um, sort of freed your expression? Because before you mentioned you were masking and always trying to yeah. fit in and always yeah. trying to, yeah. you know, become something that you weren't yeah. to well, fit no, in. Yeah, just be me. This is me. This is this is me. This is people. people what you see is what you get. This yeah. is me. People know me now everywhere. Like a lot. I I I I go I go to different groups and things and people say, oh, I know you. You're the artist. So people are starting to know mm. what I do. Mm. So. Yeah. And know me as, as being the colourful, the person who produces the colourful, textured, very textured. Very textured, mm -hmm. exactly, exactly. That's fantastic. So thank you very much for sharing that um, with me today, Anna. I've really appreciated it. And, um, and best of luck with your next big canvas creations. Thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you very much.